And it was like, generally, it's agreed upon that in order for a character to be compelling, you don't need to relate to them. You just need to understand them. And this would make a lot of sense when you get to a higher level of writing or like a medium level or higher than than beginner, at least, because there's limitless potential for this. But I actually argue against this. Like in college, you'll be taught this this storytelling principle, but I disagree. I think that in order for a character to be compelling, you have to be able to relate to them. Like just understanding them is not enough because you can't understand them without relating to them in some way. And not in the way like, oh, I've been through that same uh, experience, like, as this superhero with superpowers. But you relate to them more in the way like, oh, if I was born in the situation and I had the same parents and I had the same superpowers and, and I was in the same world with the same friends, same environment, same entire situation, then I could see myself doing the same thing. Like, and that's actually what makes people not narcissists is when people are able to understand other people's situations and realize that if they were in those same situations and and they had gone through the exact same things, they would be the same person as that person. Um, which really, this is something I want to talk about more. With, um, and I'll probably get into that later on in this stream. But it's the whole idea that like filmmaking principles, if you can make good film, then you can live a good life. The... Or, or storytelling principles. Stories are just lives without without any of the boring crap in them. And if you understand what makes a good story, then you also understand how to live a good life. And this is one of those things that allows you to make good stories and also teaches you how to live a good life if you truly follow it. It's It's like... The people who get super upset about everything else in the world, they're, oh, I can't believe this politician is like this. You know, if I was in their position, I would do something different. No, you wouldn't. You're not in their position. And if you were in their position, chances are you would do the same thing. It, people fail to understand like, oh, yeah, no, if you were in the position of, uh, of uh, a normal citizen in germany in in the 30s you would chances are you would be a nazi you think you're so great and so virtuous or whatever people are going to look back and be narcissistic at, at talking about us they're going to be like oh i would never be an animal slave owner that's what, probably what they're going to call us today people who own pets people in the future are probably going to look at us and be like oh those guys are slave owners. I would never do that. And there's probably going to be a whole bunch of offensive things, you know. Probably like dressing up as a furry is going to be considered blackface in the future. It's going to be considered just as offensive. And but I would never, I would never wear an animal costume on Halloween. Animal costume? No way. I, I could never do that. I would get canceled for that. It's probably going to be the same thing happening. They're probably going to look at us, and they're going to be like, oh, you know, if I was alive during that time, no way I would have owned a pet. No. You probably would if you had the opportunity. And uh, same thing goes for all throughout history. All of the people who were committing atrocities, war, slavery, all that stuff. Yeah, chances are if you were alive during that time period, you'd be doing the same thing. Um, and I think that's like the cure for, for, having a, for, for having an inflated ego, for thinking that you're better than others. And it's also a brilliant filmmaking principle that I I strongly strongly push for when people say this whole idea that oh you don't need to relate to characters you just need to understand them no nah. in order to understand a character's actions you have to be able to hypothetically relate to them you have to be re you have to be able to relate to them on a human level like be, simply being able to say that someone else's actions are understandable, that's literally meaningless by itself. 
Because anyone can understand why anyone does anything else. Like, you can understand why um, rocks don't move on their own, you know? But is that a compelling story? Can you relate to the rocks, though? No. So it's not a compelling story. And if the character doesn't show human characteristics or characteristics of the archetypes of the fundamental stories or characteristics, not even human, no, human covers this, but I want to be clear because when I mean human characteristics, I mean any characteristics that elicit any sort of anthropomorphism indicating that they have any kind of similarities to you because then you can relate. So even even when people anthropomorphize cars and they're like, oh, the front end of this car looks ugly. It looks like his face is drooping. That's, you're relating to the car. You're relating to this inanimate, well, I guess it is, it moves and stuff, but it's an inanimate, like technically, I guess you would call it an inanimate object. But if you can't relate, then the design of a car and the the compellingness of a character it doesn't exist and humans can relate to human characteristics even when they're in like animals like bee stars or lion king and even in inanimate objects like um like the companion cube in portal or like the rings in halo but like the rings in halo are, are a bit different I actually scratched the rings in Halo, but like the companion cube, definitely. Like these things have human characteristics, whether you notice them or not. And it's why they're compelling, because there is a part of us that can relate to that. Like I, I feel like I can understand the companion cube. And I also understand the regular cube, but I can relate to the companion cube. I can't relate to the regular cube.